This is Razer's cheapest gaming keyboard and today we're going to see whether it's actually worth buying in 2023 or if you should just buy a different keyboard at a similar price. Razer's known for their overpriced yet really high quality not enough features full of RGB products. Yes it is a wild description but I think it perfectly describes the way that Razer functions as a company. More reason as to why this keyboard is going to be interesting to take a look at. So without wasting any time let's get into it. Razer's packaging is something that I just love to gaze at. It's so well done that these guys could probably sell me a toilet paper roll if the packaging was on point which it would be obviously as long as it has some rgb lighting would be good to go another thing to make any product feel premium apart from the rgb is the very thoughtful heart touching note that razor leaves with the keyboard which you can pause to read now because suddenly i do not know english the keyboard has a solid black color to it with a noisy texture on the border and a standard matte color on the keycaps the keycaps themselves aren't really textured enough to prevent stains since they use abs plastic but everything about this is so far what i expected i mean it it would make sense that Razer wouldn't add all of these features because then their later keyboards just wouldn't be worth buying. This is how you know it's a Razer keyboard, the stickers. Where would I be without these life-changing, stylish, unforgettable stickers? Thought it couldn't get any better until we were presented with a free bonus Razer Gold voucher which basically gives you the opportunities to unlock the following on the screen. This wasn't mentioned anywhere in the description so props to them. The design looks like any other membrane keyboard out there with the exception of the Razer logo at the bottom. The keyboard itself is kind of heavy weighing at a total of 1.15 kg which in my opinion isn't too bad for such a large keyboard. The entire frame and keycaps are made from hard plastic something you tend to see a lot of in similar priced keyboards with the exception of maybe a few steel series keyboards that use a metal frame. It is however really sturdy giving it a lot more protection in the case where you might rage and decide to smash your keyboard like this guy. Man I'm gonna I'm gonna break my monitor I swear. The keyboard is wired which would already be a letdown for some but if you are searching for a Razer specific keyboard at such a low price, for Razer anyways, then the wired really wouldn't be too much of a problem. It's lengthy and can easily be fitted with some cable clips to manage beneath the desk. Moving on to everyone's favourite part of a keyboard, the RGB. Now the RGB fully brings back to life this keyboard and it definitely shows. It's the perfect level of brightness and the colours complement each other. Unlike other keyboards that you will find within the similar price range, they tend to have backlit boards or frames and never actually individual LEDs for the keys themselves, which the Sinosa keyboard can do perfectly. It not only makes it easier for you to see at night, but it also adds more of a glow onto the keyboard despite not having a full RGB background. A lot of keyboards don't incorporate this and they end up being unseeable in the dark due to the lack of light under each letter. The colours are fully customisable and the iconic Razer logo sits at the bottom. Moving on to the keys, it's a membrane keyboard and personally I'm not a big fan of membrane keyboards and I'm still not. For gaming especially, the keyboard feels too mushy and delayed in comparison to something as simple as a blue switch keyboard even if it does have great anti-ghosting. If you tend to enjoy using normal office keyboards and want a mild upgrade then maybe this would be more than enough. However if you're someone who's looking to buy their first gaming keyboard for the sole purpose of improving in games then I wouldn't recommend it. Something ideal for programmers, editors, people who use Microsoft Office a lot is the macro keys. Every single key is customizable through the Razer sign up software which basically means that you decide the function of each key and also the RGB. With that being said the keyboard could have been a lot better better if it had a volume knob or some sort of key or button at the top right section of the keyboard just to make it a little more accessible and livelier. However if it did then I don't think it would be Razer's most inexpensive keyboard. I just want to mention that this keyboard is extremely hard to break. It's spill resistant, it's got a strong plastic frame which would easily deflect any damage from the functions of the keyboard not to mention that it is heavy meaning that it's less likely to get damaged so easily. The durability is definitely a reason to buy this keyboard if you're someone who manages to always break their keyboards. Not, not sure how you how you'd always manage to do that but moving on. The typing was really smooth for general use. I enjoyed how easy it was to click each key without needing to press too hard which is the case for a lot of memory and keyboards out there. Like I said for general use this keyboard wouldn't be too bad. The keyboard is only $32 or £25. Most of the average mechanical keyboards out there are 60% and have better RGB, better switches and are overall more ideal for gaming but exceed the price of the Razer Sinosa Lite. Keyboards like the RK61 or the K552 they are phenomenal in use but both are considered budget being a whole £20 above the Sinosa Lite. So I guess you could say that Razer has come out with an ultra budget keyboard which would be for those who really would just like a Razer keyboard or for those on a super tight budget. Remember that you aren't just buying the keyboard but you're also buying the brand itself. The reason why the Sinosa Lite may have tons of sales is not only because of the price but because of all the people out there who are under the impression that Razer would naturally be the better brand to choose. All in all, I'd say that if you are going to buy a keyboard and your budget is around $30 to $40 
then you'd be better off throwing in a couple more just to buy a better keyboard because I promise you it would be worth it. So should you buy the Sinosolite in 2023? The answer is no. If you're looking for a realistically good gaming keyboard specifically for gaming, avoid buying this and purchase all the keyboards I mentioned and you won't regret it. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. If this video hits 20 likes, I'll do a video of Razer's most expensive keyboard and probably compare it to this. So let me know if you'd like to see that and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.